friends. Um, so I am jumping on here to share a little bit about essential oils real quick. This won't be long, um, maybe 20 minutes or so. But um, you may have seen some different posts on my uh, feed, like in my stories and my feed about essential oils. There's something that I have been getting super into in the last four or five months. I've been using them for years, but have really gotten into it as I've gotten more into holistic nutrition and health and valuing natural solutions to many of our health concerns and cleaning and just kind of trying to live a more non-toxic lifestyle. So I want to start doing some educational videos about essential oils because they're so cool and there's so many ways you can use them and to me they're this really cool way that God created plants and flowers and things, trees and such on this earth to give us so many of the healing properties that we need. So it's just these natural solutions which are super cool and they smell really good um, so they keep your house smelling nice. Um, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about three of the most popular essential oils and how to use them. <clears throat> so one of the main reasons why I wanted to make a video like this and I'm going to continue making some videos is I used to be kind of confused by essential oils or maybe intimidated would be a better word. Um, <clears throat> I like I would see them in the store and I knew they smelled good and I thought the idea of them was cool and kind of like replacing candles with them but I didn't really understand like what to do with them like what do you just do with an oil like you don't burn it like you do a candle like I just didn't really understand them so I didn't really use them um, and then over the years I've gotten used to them and done some research and just no one really ever taught me about them I've just learned along the way um, so I'm trying to kind of help make it a little bit clearer if you're one of those people like me that's like, I don't get them, what are they? Um, you don't maybe really understand or maybe you're kind of into them, but don't really fully know how to use them. So I won't today be going in depth on like the science of how they work and every essential oil and that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep this really basic as a basic intro. Um, and then I would like to do future classes on essential oils. So. Um, if you're kind of coming in or even watching this later, drop a comment below to say if you would be interested in attending future classes about different types of essential oils, how to use them, how they can benefit your health, how they can clean your home, things like that. Because um, I'd love to do more, so I want to make sure to include you. So today what I'm going to do is talk about three popular oils and ways to use them so that it takes out some of that intimidation of like, what are these oils for? How do I use them? I um, recently started selling doTERRA essential oils and I've had some friends and people buying them already and I'm having to go through a lot of like, okay, here's some ways you can use them. Here's what it's good for. So this video will kind of help give them more of that information and then I can refer people to this video as well. Um, and if you have questions about how to use them, hopefully this will help. Um, hey, Stacy. Cool. Um, I'll remember that for future, uh... Um, so keep in mind, I'm going to talk about some of the most basic and common uses for these oils. Um, most essential oils, and especially these ones I'm going to show you, have tons of uses. So I'm not going to go into like every way you can use them or every blend. I could go on and on and on. And I will make future videos again about different ways you can use them. So I'm going to keep it more basic to like everyday life, how these can help you. So the first one, um, this is one of the most popular oils that comes in a lot of kits and things, is lemon essential oil. Um, so lemon essential oil, um, it comes from lemon peel or the lemon skin. Um, and it smells just like lemon because um, it's from lemon. So it has that really nice, bright, fresh scent to it. Um, very aromatically pleasing, I guess. Um, so lemon, and it's also one of the more affordable oils as well. So lemon 
Um, has a lot of cool uses. It is good for respiratory issues and allergies, things like that. So it helps with breathing and it helps with clearing the air. Um, it's also good for digestion. So this is something you can add into like food or water. And I'll go more into detail about how you would actually use that internally because it's not safe with hot oil. So I'll finish that at the end. Um, but this is something that's good for digestion and helping to detox the body. Um, and then lemon is also, it's good for energy. It's good for boosting your mood. Like if you're kind of that midday slump, you're feeling a little tired, a little depressed, lemon can help boost your mood um, and kind of revitalize your energy a little bit. And then one really cool thing I think about lemon is it can be used for cleaning a lot of things. So it's really good for kind of antibacterial cleaning kitchen surfaces, bathroom counters, things like that. It's also really good at taking out sticky stuff, um, which like blew my mind when I realized that. Like they're, I forget what I use it on, but when you have kind of sticky goo residue left behind from things, if you take a little bit of oil and just put it on like a, a normal washcloth or something like that and just rub it, it will take off the sticky goopy stuff. Um, it's amazing. Like you don't need anything really special. You just sometimes a little bit of the elbow grease, uh, maybe a little water to wipe it off at the end, but it's a really good kind of um, degreaser, de goo -er. <laughs> Um So this is a really cool one and actually I I, because I know that it's good with that kind of thing, I actually dropped a lipstick on the carpet the other day and the, my lemon oil was sitting like right next to me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Um, so I just took a washcloth. I put maybe like two drops of oil on the washcloth and just started to scrub the floor and it actually got the red lipstick out of the floor, um, which was super amazing. So I was kind of, I had a feeling it might work, um, but it actually kind of blew my mind when it actually did work and it got it out. Um, Stacy is asking if the, if it um, will work for grease stuck on the oven. And yes, it does. Um, it's good for greasy things. So um, there's some different cleaning combinations you can use. But I would, I think for the most efficient use of the oil, it's helpful to put in like a spray bottle and just spray it on the surface. Like if you're doing something like an oven or a kitchen counter, you can spray it on there and wipe it down. Um, depending on the amount of grease, you might have to go over it a few times. You might have to add more oils. Um, and there's some other oils that are really good for cleaning that I won't go into today. Um, but sometimes you might need to add some other oils that are good for cleaning, but generally it is good for um, just cleaning up kind of stickiness and grease and things like that. Plus it leaves your house feeling or scented like super fresh. Like, you know, some people maybe like the smell of like a pine saw, like a fresh kitchen, but that's all fake synthetic chemical stuff. Um, so this leaves that like natural lemony fresh smell, which is really cool. Sure, Stacy. Um, so those are some basic ways that you can use lemon. Um, and then the next super popular oil, this is probably the most popular oil that most people know are familiar with use, <laughs> is lavender essential oil. Um, so lavender smells amazing. Um, I don't know if I know anyone who doesn't like the smell of lavender. It's just a really pleasing, soft aroma. Um, just like if you've ever driven past lavender fields or flowers, like that smell, you'll smell that in the air. So that's what this oil is like. So one, this is a really good replacement for like candles in your home. And again, I'm not going to go into the dangers and toxins in things like candles and fragrances and things like that. That's a whole other video that I can do sometime, but just know that most anything that's in your house that's, um, giving off a fragrance or, you know, something you spray or something you're putting in the air. If it's not essential oil, it's really releasing toxins into your home. So this is a really good way to freshen the air without putting any toxins in the air. And most essential, maybe not most, but a lot of essential oils are very antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal. Um, so they're really good for not just making the room smell nice, but while they're making the room smell nice, um, they also will help kill germs and bacteria in the air, which is super cool. 
Um, and there is science behind all of this. Again, I won't go into it all, um, but I'm currently actually enjoying, I'm in a microbiology class and a physiology class right now. So learning tons about how cells work and how things get in and out of cells within our body. Um, and so there is tons of scientific studies and research on essential oils and how they do reach our bodies at the cellular level change brain chemistry, things like that. So it's not just like this um, woo-woo kind of hippie idea. Um, there's scientific proof behind it. I would not be using these so much if it was just kind of a cool idea that it might work. Um, there's actual proof to these things. So getting back to specifics of lavender. Um, lavender is largely known for its ability to calm, to soothe, to relax. It's really good for diffusing before bedtime. It's good for smelling or diffusing if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling depressed. Um, it can really help, like it's actually very good for depression, anxiety, and sleep. Um, and just in general, kind of stress relief. So, you know, I don't really have a lot of trouble sleeping. I don't need to I, I diffuse it anyway to help with sleep, um, but I like it for just kind of a general calming. Maybe end of the day, you just kind of want to chill out a little bit after a stress day. Um, lavender is very good for that. So if you deal with any kind of stress or anxiety, depression, this is a really good one for that. Um, and it's also very good for skin. Um, and that I actually learned more recently because um, I always knew it more as like a, it just smells really good. It's good for depression, things like that, um, and for calming and relaxing. But um, it's also very good for skin health. Um, so it can really improve the skin tone um, and quality as well as help to repair like cuts, small wounds, things like that. You can put this oil and many others on afterwards to help repair your skin. Um, so a lot of oils actually are really good for any kind of wound healing and scar healing. So this is one of those. Um, so I, um, this is kind of bonus tip, but I will add this into like a moisturizer or a toner or something so that it goes onto my face pretty much daily to help with skin. Um, and then let me take a sip of water. The last one that's very popular and one of my very, very favorites is peppermint essential oil. So peppermint, again, like the others, has tons of uses. Um, this one I use the most of any essential oil. Um, so peppermint smells like peppermint. Again, all these are, you know, they are true to what they sound like. Um, so it smells just like peppermint leaf. Um, it has a very strong aroma. Um, so this one I use pretty much every morning, uh, and I'm getting a little distracted with how I use it, but um, I use it pretty much every morning for kind of helping to clear up sinuses and respiratory stuff, because I tend to wake up with a little bit of a stuffy nose, um, and if you inhale this, it will open up your sinuses, like, for real. Um, so I've, I will um, take the bottle, and I feel like a druggy or something, but, and just put it under one nostril and breathe in really deeply. And it's like, it will wake you up. Um, so it's really good for respiratory issues, sinuses. Where's the front so you can see it. Um, it's good for putting into the air to kind of help clear those, uh, nasal passageways and things. Um, it's also very good for energy. Um, so it's a really natural, like, energizer. Um, and it's very cooling, too. So if you, like today, my husband and I went on a run this morning for six miles. I came back, my feet just felt, like, kind of inflamed, hot, tired. Um, so putting this on, like, tired feet or tired, tired muscles feels really good because it's very cooling. Like, you get a strong cooling sensation from peppermint. Um... And it's also really good for headaches, headaches and stomach aches. So besides kind of opening up the airways and respiratory stuff, probably my most common uses for peppermint oil are um, digestive things. So if I 
ate something and my stomach's not sitting well, I will put some of this on my stomach. Um, I sometimes will put it into water um, and just drink throughout the day to help with digestion because peppermint really improves kind of gut health and digestion. Um, or if I feel like I have a headache, then I will put this on the back of my neck or my temples or both or even behind the ears. And it, to me, it's like amazing um, because you put it back here and the whole back of your neck will get very cool. Um, and the last time I had a headache, well, many times I do this, but anytime I have a headache, if I put that on, since I started using quality oils, um, so I used to buy cheaper oils because I didn't know the difference between a really good, highly tested, proven to work, proven really high quality oil. I didn't know the difference between that and what just gets sold at Whole Foods, Amazon, Target, most of that stuff, none of it's regulated by the FDA. Um, so a lot of it is filled with synthetic fragrances, it's diluted, it, um, like the processing of the plant may have not been done well, and by the time you get it, it really actually doesn't work at all. Um, it might smell nice, but it could actually be releasing some toxins in your home, or just be completely ineffective. Or, I also have some cheap oils that came with a diffuser that I got, and a lot of the times if I've tried to diffuse those, I get a headache from them. So sometimes people think that essential oils give them headaches, but generally they should not if you're using a really good high quality essential oil. And sorry, this is kind of a side note, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but that's why I'm choosing and selling doTERRA um, because I trust the quality of them. Most brands out there, I do not. Um, I'm not gonna use fake cheap, if stuff is really cheap, really cheap essential oils, it's cheap for a reason because it's not good and it's not gonna work and it might even give you headaches or have other side effects. So that's kind of my just real quick doTERRA explanation and plug, which I'll get to more at the end. But back to peppermint oil. So um, those are some of the main uses for it. Again, there's tons, but these three, lemon, peppermint, and lavender are some of the most popular essential oils because they do so much, they smell great, um, they're very versatile, and they're kind of in the less expensive range. Um, so those are ones that, <clears throat> if you're kind of curious about essential oils, I would definitely start with those, maybe among some others, but those are like some of the most basic that I would recommend. Um, and they, you know, especially, like right now, I'm having some seasonal allergies, um, if you deal with that kind of stuff regularly or respiratory issues, these are really good for those too. Um, okay, so those are the three basics. Now I'm going to share how to use them because sometimes this is more confusing than the oils themselves. So there's a few ways you can use oils. Some of the main ones are aromatically, meaning in the air, you're breathing them in um, from the environment around you or breathing them directly from the bottle. Um, topically, so putting them on your body or internally, which would be taking them internally inside your body. Um, so just to explain a little bit about some of the ways you can do that. So diffusers are probably the most popular way to use essential oils. This is a very small, compact, simple um, diffuser from doTERRA. Um, looks like this, it just has a little empty uh, thing in there, a um, little empty pool, you fill it up with water, or basically what you would do is you take a couple of drops of whatever oil you want to use, or say you wanted to do a blend, you would do like one to two drops of each, fill it up with water, put the top on, you plug it in, they normally have a plug at the bottom, um, and then you have settings for like how long you want it to go, if you want a light to be on, most of them have an, a light so you can use it as a night light or you can get kind of some light therapy qualities from it. Um, and so there's different settings for how long you want it to go for. There are much bigger ones, um, there's smaller ones, there's a variety of types. Um, I have one that is really cool because it has a variety of lights in different colors, most of them have different colors. Um, but the whole thing lights up and then there's a setting where it like flickers like a candle, which is super cool because one of the main uses for essential oils is replacing candles in the home. Um, and so having a diffuser that flickers is really cool because then it still looks and smells like a candle but without all the toxins. Um, so there's tons of different types of diffusers. Um, nowadays there's like 
bracelets you can get that you can put the oils into, all types of stuff. But if you want to keep it really simple, you can just use a diffuser. And if you want to keep it really, really simple, what you can do is basically drop a drop into your hand, rub it, and then just breathe it in. That's basically the most simple, cheap diffuser in the world is just put it on your hands and breathe it in. Um, I also will sometimes, like like I said, with morning stuff, I'll just smell, just inhale, and I will get the benefit from that. Um, sometimes I will do things like keep a bottle of rosemary at my desk because rosemary is very good for memory and for concentration and focus. And so I'll just keep it on the desk and I might get like a little bit of a smell just coming from the bottle, but then I can pick it up every once in a while, breathe it in for 10, 20, 30 seconds, put it back down, and then every once in a while when I feel like I need a little boost, just pick the bottle back up. So again, that's a very cheap, easy way to get the aromatic benefits of essential oils. And just real short uh, explanation, basically the oils go into your nose, go into your olfactory nerve, which is in your brain, and that releases um, I don't want to say it releases chemicals, but it changes the chemical dynamics in your brain. So something like lavender actually goes in and helps to change your mood or help improve your sleep. So there is like a stuff happening inside of your brain when you smell something. It doesn't just smell nice. Like there's actual physical changes that happen um, in your brain and in your body. Um, so aromatically, that's one way. Another thing you can do is just fill up a spray bottle with um, water and witch hazel, which kind of helps um, with the mixing of the oil and water, and just spray it in the room, just like you would any other room spray. So that's a really cheap and easy way too. Um, I would recommend for diffusing, although it's cool to just put it on your hand, you're gonna um, waste more oil that way. Because um, one drop in a diffuser will last for like five, eight hours. But if you put it on your hands, they're very volatile, so they evaporate into the air very quickly. So some oils, you might only be able to smell them on your hand for 20, 30 minutes, five minutes. Others last a longer time, but so you're losing the benefit pretty quickly um, after you take that in. So you don't wanna constantly be dropping oil into your hand all day long because you're gonna go through a bottle really quickly. Um, another way you can use them, and this will kind of converge from how to make your oils last longer and not go through them so quickly into the next topic, which is topically. So you can put your oils on your body. And again, there is a chemical reaction that happens here. You put it on your body and your cells, because the oil, because it's oil, it's able to actually get through the cell membrane and affect some change. Um, <clears throat> so putting them on your body is a really great way to take them in as well. Um, and that might be you might um, put them on your hands and smell, like I said before, so you're getting both the topical benefit where it's actually gonna go into your body, but also the smell. Then if there's ones that you don't like so much and you don't really want to smell it, you can put them in places like the bottom of your feet. And the bottom of your feet is really good because the skin's thicker and the pores are larger, um, so you're gonna be able to soak that in really well. But also it's good for oils that don't smell so good, like oregano. Oregano is amazing for like helping to fight um, bacteria, colds, flu, all that type of stuff, boost your immunity, help you get over sicknesses quicker. But it smells awful. Um, so if you put it on your feet and then put socks on, then you won't really smell it so much. Like that's not one that you wanna have on your hands. Um, so how I like to do it topically, unless I'm gonna just drop it in my hand, is for the most part to put it in a little roller bottle like this. Um, so these you can get on Amazon, eBay, doTERRA website, you can find them all over the place. Um, and it just has a little roller top. And all you have to do is add in the oils that you want. And I won't go into like specific amounts in this. There's different ways to do it, but I'll probably you know put anywhere from three to 10 drops, depending on what the blend is or the oil. Um, and then you just top it off with fractionated coconut oil, or you can use um, avocado oil, jojoba oil, almond oil, um, but some sort of oil that stays liquid all the time at room temperature. Um, and then you can just roll it on 
And I like that because it extends it a little bit. That's how I typically will kind of do it in the morning, like if I want to keep that smell going. Versus carrying the bottle around with me everywhere, I'll just do it that way. This is also a really good way to put it on the bottom of your feet um, because then you don't even have to get your hands messy or anything. Like I put time on this morning and time smells horrible, but if it's in a bottle and you can rub it on your feet, put on socks, then you don't have to touch it. You don't have the smell lingering. Um, so that's a really good way to do it. That's also good for like young children. You can use these on babies and children, but their feet is one of the safest places to do it. Um, and just disclaimer, not every oil you should do that. And it depends on ages. Again, that's a whole different video, so um, I won't go into that, but this, these can be used on almost every age. It just kind of depends what the oils are and where you're gonna put them, but that's one way you can use them on younger children. Um, so this one, for instance, I was able to make a blend. So you can put, like I could just put peppermint in here and it could just be my peppermint bottle. And I actually do have a bottle like that and I carry it with me everywhere. Um, I put it in my purse so that I can have it. Um, it works for cramps, it works for stomach aches. This morning I was super bummed because I was having kind of allergies at church and like you don't want to be sneezing and stuff like that. And I forgot to take peppermint oil but it would have been really good to have to smell or put in my hands because it helps with kind of that allergic reaction to calm it down. Um, but I like to just carry one of these in my purse all the time. So um, this one I mixed in Breathe, which is a really good blend for respiratory issues, and then Peppermint and Wintergreen. So that's one way you can blend different oils together to get different smells and then put them on. Um, and I will use this again for those like headache issues. Just take it and rub it on the back of the neck, go behind the ears or on the temples. I use this for stomach, like if I'm having digestive issues, cramps, anything like that. Um, so the roller is a really good way to put it on. And part of the benefits of a roller is that the oils can be very strong. So typically, like something like peppermint, you really should dilute before you use it. You don't really wanna just be like pouring it into your hands all the time. It's a very strong oil. And majority of essential oils, it's safest to dilute them in oil, a carrier oil. Like I said before, either fractionated coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, jojoba, I won't go into them all again, but you want to dilute them in some sort of oil. And so sometimes it can be annoying to like squeeze oil into your hand, drop the oils, rub them, all that stuff. Like it just gets messy and annoying sometimes. So this is a much easier way to put them on. You don't have to get your hands messy. Um, it goes on much more smooth. You don't always have to do this like mess with the oil and all that stuff. And then you save time because it's already pre-made, pre-diluted, ready to go. And this is a way where you can kind of, um, like if you're using it in kind of a therapeutic or medicinal type of way, then you can start with like a drop or two, see how it goes. If that works, then good. If it doesn't do anything, then you can add a couple more drops in here and just add more drops until you get to the place where, you know, okay, now this peppermint is taking away my headaches or you know, whatever the case may be, um, to find the right uh, solution that works for your problem. So you can kind of vary how diluted it is to make it work for you. Um, it's always good to use the least amount of oil needed because these are very potent. You don't want to like overdo oils all the time. Um, so this allows you to dilute them and just really keep them safe, keep your skin safe. Um, I mean, I've had, like I used to sometimes put lavender or peppermint right under my nose just because convenience sake and that was a really bad idea don't do that I would end up getting like irritation and issues under there so that's why you don't really want to put the oils directly onto your skin um, although some things like lavender are so gentle that you can but you usually want to dilute them and then the good thing about putting them in a roller bottle is they will last a lot longer like this is probably I don't know three drops of each oil and it's already lasted me a couple weeks. It'll last quite a bit longer because you can see there's a good amount of oil in there. Whereas if I'm doing a drop every time I want to benefit from peppermint, I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, okay, last way. Uh, I'm just reading Stacy's comment real quick. Peppermint is a hot, yes, peppermint is a hot oil. Um, yeah, same thing. <laughs> uh, Cece said she put it on her upper lip so she could breathe it in and it was stinging and had to wash it off. Same thing. That's what I did on my nose. I used to do that and it was like, oh, that was a terrible idea. So yeah, certain oils especially can be really hot or really cold. 
very stinging. You don't want to put them directly on your skin. Um, so good call, Stacey. Yeah, don't, you don't want to do that. So always safest to dilute, which is why these work well for topical application. Um, generally, I mean, you'll generally be okay in the palm of your hands, but there are some that you still don't want to do that with. Um, and there's some that you can use for skin and acne and things like that. But again, you want to kind of dilute it into something. Some are safe to put directly on there, others aren't. Um, again, that's a whole different video, but if you have questions about that, feel free to contact me. I love talking about these things and educating, so let me know if you want to know more. Um, okay, so the last way is internally. So lemon and peppermint, um, I take internally, and there's a lot of debate on this. Like some people say absolutely never take oils internally. Others say, no, it's totally fine. Um, but really what matters is the quality of the oil. Um, so again, the cheapy oils that you're going to find like on Amazon or at Ross or Target or something, don't take those internally. Do not. Um, you don't know what's in there. You can't trust it. And they will all say 100% pure essential oil. They can put whatever they want on the bottle. Um, but you don't really know what's in there. You don't know if there's, there's typically might be a fake fragrance in there mixed in with some essential oil. They might dilute it with coconut oil. So don't ever take those internally. Internal use is for doTERRA oils. Um, there's one other company that I would trust to take internally and that I have. Um, but other than that, I would not recommend internal use of oils. However, if you have doTERRA, um, then these I would suggest are safe to take internally. So again, like I said, I will put peppermint like in my water to help with digestion. Um, and I go back and forth. Sometimes I put it on my stomach. Sometimes I put it in my water. I don't necessarily feel super safe doing the oils internally all the time. So I'm not going to put peppermint in my water every day. I'm not going to put lemon in my water every day. But maybe once or twice a week, I will. The rest of the time, I just put it on topically. Um, and then lemon is obviously great in water. I also just recently got lime. So it's a really good way to freshen up your water, make it taste really good. And then um, lemon is good for detoxifying. Um, so it's a good one to add to your water. Um, and then there's some like thyme, oregano, rosemary, um, things like that that are amazing for like fighting sickness. So they're really good to take a lot, but like I said, some of them kind of stink and you don't want to put them on internally. So you can add them into your cooking. Um, and you can do that with lemon too. Like there might be some baking that you would want to add a drop of lemon into. Um, I made some uh, like a homemade pesto the other day and some pasta and I just added like a drop of oregano and drop of thyme in there. Um, they are very strong. <laughs> um, so when cooking with them, you got to play around with it a little bit, but at least you're getting some of the, the benefits of the oils if you don't really want to rub it on your body or have to smell it in the house or diffuse it. So internally is another way to take it. Um, this very much depends on the oil. So I'm not going to say like, oh, just take any oil internally. Don't do that. Um, it depends on the oil. Some are not safe to take internally, even if they're a really high quality like doTERRA. Um, and things like lavender, like why do you need to take that internally anyway? Like, I don't know why I even would want to do that. Um, but things that are more like food, um, related, um, you can do that. And there's some, well, I won't go into all the other ways you can, all the other oils and things, but, um, you can take a high quality oil internally. Um, so again, doTERRA is the only one I would recommend aside from one other big company. Um, if you're familiar with kind of the world of essential oils, you probably know what that company is. So, but otherwise I just, there's not enough research and science and testing behind most companies for me to feel comfortable to say, take them internally. Um, you're perfectly fine just doing it topically. And that probably depends on the person if you feel good about it or not. Again, I don't feel comfortable doing that all the time. I just, I'm not, I'd rather keep it safe with aromatics um, or topically and then from time to time doing it internally um, just to get a more potent dose of it basically. Um, so things like again, digestion, I like to take peppermint from, for that a little bit more often or maybe lemon if I'm having a day with some respiratory issues. So um, just to recap, the main three oils that are very simple to start with that I would recommend are lavender, lemon, and peppermint. 
And the three main uses, ways to use them are aromatically, so breathing it in, topically, putting it on your skin with an oil, um, or taking it internally. And there are many other tricks and tips and ways on how to aromatically and topically use these and what you would want to do with different oils. If you would be interested in hearing some of those more detailed explanations um, or hearing more about other oils, ways to use them, um, then let me know in the comments. I will plan to do more videos like this. Um, I will probably do some private Zoom classes as well and gatherings to teach more about them. So then I'll know who to reach out to. Um, and then if you have any questions in general about essential oils, like I said, I love talking about them. Um, so reach out to me. If you have questions about doTERRA too, you can ask me about that. Um, my, I will put a, a note in the comments or might put my link in the comments. Um, but basically you can find the oils at mydoterra.com slash renewal fit coach, like my business name. Um, and I'll put that in the comments. Um, doTERRA is spelled like this, D-O-T-E-R-R-A. Um, and there's there's different ways of purchasing. There's a lot of different kits. There's um, little kits like this, the Family Essentials kits that comes with 10 oils. There's some kits right now that come, and this comes with a diffuser too. There's some right now that have like a diffuser and two or three oils to just kind of get you started. And there's kits that have like every single oil you would ever want <laughs> um, in the entire kit. There's also sets that are like home cleaning. So it's not just oils, it's sprays, it's laundry detergent, it's cleaning concentrate. Um, there's things for athletes like a muscle rub and different oils that are good for athletes. So there's all kinds of ways you can get started. Um, and then there's membership, there's retail. So it can be slightly complicated, but um, you can check out doTERRA um, with my link below. And like I said, if you have questions, it took me a bit of navigating and kind of exploring the essential world to figure some of this out, um, memberships and pricing and what's good and what's not. So I'd be happy to answer questions about that. But that's just kind of a very basic intro to some simple oils that you can use on a daily basis um, to improve your health as well as the smell of your house. Um, all these oils help to clear the air too, if you have any funk or odors or anything like that. Um, so they're really good for freshening up the air. Um, so thank you for watching, whether you're watching it live or we'll be watching it in the future. Um, and again, just comment down below if you'd like to attend future classes. Um, and if you know anyone who might be interested in learning more, then I can host a class for you and your friends or coworkers or whatever. Um, and then, uh, go ahead and visit the website, check out some of the oils and let me know if you have any questions. Um, so thanks again for watching, tuning into this, and I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday.